what's up everybody so i'm all back here now uh back at home and uh decided that uh, since i have the day off it's time to watch some horror movies and relax and not really do anything and i decided to finally check out the new hellraiser movie um what can i say about this movie uh i'm i don't know about spoilers maybe minor i don't know maybe major um might be some i i really don't know because I'm still trying to like process a lot of things and whenever I process something I can never really think of well you know I can talk about this talk about that and go through the whole thing um so what did I really like about this movie um I love the fucking Cenobites they are awesome the designs of them in this movie are fucking amazing uh that is a fucking plus the the gore in this movie is also an a plus uh I I just when it happened sometimes some things were kind of off screen ish um but when you really saw things up close and personal uh like the the spike through the throat f fucking glorious i love that uh the transformation at the end of the movie fantastic fan fan fucking fantastic um acting wise it's what i expected it to be i didn't think that this was going to be like an acting powerhouse that we're going to have these super powerful performances and that everything was going to be on on par um but you know i think it was serviceable before what it was there were a couple of times where i was kind of like ugh, this is just not it's not turning out the way that i was hoping um and uh, of course reina decides that she wants to be a part of the video see she's right over there she enjoyed the new hellraiser as well um but she it's you know the the main character I was not a big fan of to be honest and I think that that's kind of what's going to deter a lot of people from this movie yeah I know you didn't like her either um I just the, there's not a whole lot I felt like redeeming for her and even the choices that she made at the end of the movie were just like one what there was smart choices to be honest with you like the re the revelation of everything of what was going on with the Cenobites uh, the twist ish, I, I knew it right from the beginning of the goddamn movie. Just, I knew it right away. Um, and not even when she, they went and saw the lawyer, um, that I just, like, I knew that this was what it was and this is where we're going with things. And okay. Uh, the first, you know, I don't know, 20 minutes of the movie is a little slow to be honest. Um, it, it picks up though quite a bit when we get to the mansion and it makes me just wish that we didn't necessarily have that beginning scene. It makes makes sense story-wise, right? Because of the twist that happens in the movie, which I won't give away. But it makes sense why we're why we go through that. And that we, you know, experience Riley and Trevor and all the, her brother and her brother's friend and her boy brother's boyfriend, Colin, and and all these things. Um you know, I wish the person that was first killed by the Cenobites, not not the very first person at the beginning of the movie who's just a throwaway fucking character, but I wish that the very first person that was taken from by the Cenobites wasn't taken. I don't know if I needed that right away. I wish it was swapped with somebody else um, that, that is at the end of the film. Um, I, I don't know why we did that. Uh, I know, I know why, I know why in terms of the story, it makes sense and, you know, give her a reason to finish the fucking puzzle box and, and all those things, you know, I like that there was all the different configurations of, of the device. Um, uh, I, I liked the, the whole idea with what the mansion really was, I love seeing the giant Leviathan at the end of the movie. I think that was really cool. Um, there definitely just were some stupid choices. And the way things kind of worked itself out for the the end of the movie. Um, and that's that's where I had a little bit of, uh, you know, problems with it uh, in, in overall. But, I mean, overall, I don't think it's bad. I don't. And if you've seen any of the, the direct-to-video VOD sequels for Hellraiser... This is nowhere near it. I would put it on par with part two. Um, I, I would definitely put it there. It's not a classic in like the way that Hellraiser is, right? And, and I definitely, the, 
you know, listening to the the guys, you know, Alex and Christina on Beyond the Void, they just recently talked about the first two episodes. If you don't listen to that podcast, you should do yourself a favor and listen to that podcast because I always sing its praises. Um, I, I really like the opinions that both Alex and Christina and they both, you know, I, I always pimp that fucking podcast like crazy. But there's a reason why I pimp that fucking podcast. And I seem feel like I'm such a like a Stan or Homer for it. Um, but it's because of the conversations that they have and everything. And, you know, they went and they talked about the original Hellraiser recently. And I see a lot of that in this. And a lot of people didn't like it when it first came out. And some people, it took repeated viewings. And, um, I definitely think that this is a repeated viewing type of movie. I think that once you kind of know everything and where it's kind of going, I think that you can enjoy the other stuff around it. David Brucker did such a Bruckner, I'm sorry. Uh, did such a good job in the way that it was directed, in the way that the story flowed. Um, I I just feel like there was a lot of love and care that was given into the source material. And I like that you got a lot more lore in the whole thing than you did with the original Hellraiser. And I know that the, the original Hellraiser was held back by producers and studios and stuff, and they had to cut a bunch of stuff out where they want to talk about the origin of Pinhead and and all these different things they want to do with that movie, you know, and it wasn't even going to be called Hellraiser in the first place, uh, which, you know, is kind of sad, to be honest with you. I wish it was, you know, based on the original title of the book, which right now, oh, escapes me. Sorry. I, I know I'm being lazy and being in this position, but I'm, I'm just fucking tired. Uh, but this... I think it does a, a very serviceable job. I, I think that it could bring new fans into it, but it's it's going to have people that just aren't fans of it. They're, they're just not going to be, and I can see that. And it's the same thing with the original Hellraiser. And, uh, you know, the first two are, are good movies. I, I lose a little bit in the second one, to be honest with you, and I think if this one gets a sequel, which I'm pretty sure that it's going to get a sequel, um, I think that it did enough. And I think that the 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 praise is enough for this movie for it to get one. Um, and personally, between this and Prey, I think help that uh, Hulu is doing great in these kind of reboots and allowing these directors to do these movies that pay homage to the original and are good follow up to it. Um, while while Prey is directly related to the franchise, this is its own little reboot, re, re you know reimagining of the story. And, and there are things that I really wish that we had from the original Hellraiser that, you know, the, like, I like the whole thing. I know that the, you know, the, the, like, the wife's character is primarily that, you know, she's addicted to lust in the first movie and fucking the brother, uh, brother-in-law of her new husband and, you know, killing the guys to get the blood so that he can come back to life so that he can escape the Cenobites and, and Leviathan and all that stuff. Whereas with this, it's, you know, her finding out, you know, finding the cube, being shown the cube, and then slowly, you know, configuring it, but not actually, like, like solving the puzzle for this one instead brings out, a, like, a blade that gets the blood of the person that's going to be sacrificed so you can get to the next level of, you know, the whole cube. Um, and it that that's a little different, at least from, you know, I haven't seen a lot of the later ones where they go way into the lore for the whole thing of what they've created in the Hellraiser universe. So it's it's something that I don't know if it's similar, but, you know, in the last one, it's just you, I mean, for the first one specifically, you solve the puzzle box, and then out come the Cenobites, and, uh, you know, I think the wish-granting thing is still kind of present, as it is in this one. If you solve it all the way to Leviathan, then the Cenobites grant you a wish, right? And, um, yeah, I, I just, I think that the story is just, it's like a little lacking. There's a couple of places where I feel like you could have been a little shorter with the way everything went, and that um, you could have cut this by a good 15 minutes, and I think you'd still have a solid movie. Now, the one thing that everybody is probably going to be talking about is Pinhead, right? That we now have a more androgynous Pinhead. It is played by a woman. Um, I I have no problem with it. Absolutely no problem. I, I felt like I was still seeing Pinhead. I don't, you know, I know that that's a sticking point for some people. I, I don't get it. 
so much. I understand that Clive Barker, you know, when he did the original Hellraiser, um, he changed a bunch of things from his original story because the original Pinhead was supposed to be androgynous and wasn't even supposed to be the main fucking focus of the Cenobites either, right? And here, it kind of isn't, you know? I mean, Pinhead is, right, still kind of like the head priest for everything that's going on here, but Pinhead doesn't do a lot of the dirty work. A bunch of the other Cenobites do a lot of the dirty work. Um, and I, I can't remember what the name of the other Cenobite is that has the cool, like, spread out open head thing that's going on. Um, and I know it's probably was in the credits and I just didn't pay attention to it. But, uh, like, again, I liked her design. The Chatterer, again, seeing that, that pin, uh, that Cenobite again was pretty, pretty cool to see. Um, and then a bunch of the other ones. I, I really like the one that has, like, the face, but there's, like, nothing back here. Um, uh, that was a really cool fucking crazy cool fucking design like i said the centibytes in this thing are awesome so overall i'm i'm gonna give this a, a three chains out of five i think that it's solid i i definitely think that there's room to grow i think if they were to make another one of these movies take the things that are negatives from the movie and then you know go ahead and they could improve upon that give a little more backstory to the Cenobites. They could, you know, I would love to go more into like the hierarchy system of Cenobites. You know, what makes one a priest? What makes one a grunt? You know, what, who is their God? You know, those things I would love to see. I don't need to necessarily know about the whole history with everything, you know, about how they, you know, it shows here that, yeah, that's, they show you how a Cenobite is made. And that, that is fucking awesome too. Um, but you don't have to go into the whole, oh, they, they forgot their memories and they used to be human and these are the things that they did and blah, blah, blah. You don't have to go into that stuff. But let's let's go into like Cenobite culture. Like, you know, what are the foods that Cenobites make on a regular basis? Um, what movies do most Cenobites like? You know, is it mostly just torture porn? Or is it, you know, something that, that has a very rich story with uh, some death involved? Um, you know... What, what are the traditions? What type of festivals do they have? What type of music do Cenobites like? The music in this movie is also very, very good. I think it fits every scene that it's in and that it's used in. But but those are the things that like I want to know with an, another Hellraiser movie. Like I said, I think that this one's solid. I think that it has it had the potential to be great, and it just kind of missed it. And it could have even had the potential to be utterly fantastic. But is it a bad movie? I don't think it's a bad movie at all. But I think that your mileage is going to vary. I think that some people are going to really like it, and some people are probably not going to like it if they're expecting something different. And I think that if you go into the movie with a sour mouth, then you're not going to like the movie. I think that if you're already upset by the fact that uh, the story itself is changing a lot and that characters have been changed around and the way they do it, then then I just think that it's not necessarily going to be for you. I think that you're just going to kind of go in there. But if you go, I think, with just a, I want to see what they're going to do, then you're. I think you're really going to like it. And that's the way that I went into this. And surprisingly enough, I did really like it. So, all right, well... There's uh, still the 31 and 31 that's going on, so make sure that you check out all the different movies that are out there. Make sure that you also go and uh, check out the latest podcast. There's a podcast on Swamp Thing. The next movie we're doing is Vampire in Brooklyn, which I'm kind of looking forward to see because I haven't seen it in a very long time. And, you know, it's Wes Craven doing comedy and horror, so we'll see what happens with that. But uh, if you like the content, make sure you like and subscribe. Keep uh, checking out the videos that we do and uh, hope you guys enjoy this. So we'll catch you next time and make sure that you take care of yourselves and each other.